So in this project, I got these percussion tracks and they sound like this. So really interesting sound, really kind of fat and oversaturated and over boomy, but it has tons of character. But you know, in the context of a mix, this may lead to an overall kind of congestion in the low end and drown out the other low end elements, right? So I can reduce the decay time, but that also affects the character of the sound kind of further back. So if I want to control this tail, well, I can use compression, set an attack time so that the transient is less affected before the compressor kind of clamps down on the tail end of the sound. So I did a bit of work and this is the compressor settings I got now. You know, it's doing a good job of writing the game kind of how I want it. It's a bit too jagged because the sound is reverberated so the levels fluctuate a lot. But the real problem occurs when the kick hits start to get closer together, like right here. So we can kind of see that the first hit triggers full gain reduction, but by the time the second hit arrives, the compressor hasn't had enough time to bounce back to no reduction. And again, if I bring down my release time, then the problem goes away here, but for those longer hits, we start to hear the tail end kind of come back up audibly, and that's not something I want. So for something like this, I'm more inclined not to use a compressor and just do a kind of manual, no plugin compression. And luckily Reaper makes this pretty easy. So let me just show you. To start, I'll click on this icon on my track to see all the parameters I can automate. And right at the top left, I want to show my volume pre-effects envelope. So just click on this box next to the name and we can close this. And now on this lane is where we would write the gain automation on. This lane goes before the insert effects, whereas volume automation is post effects. Since we may still opt to use plugins after this manual compression, and I want my quote unquote compressed signal to be kind of fed into those plugins, I'm gonna write automation right here. Let's go to our first kick here and start by inserting a point at the transient, maybe just slightly after by holding shift and clicking on the lane. And I'll go where I want the gain to reset and insert another point there. Also go here and insert a third point here and then drag it down a bit. So congratulations, you have your first instance of manual compression now. So just like with a compressor, we have generated a gain reduction curve. It's just a simpler one. The distance between our first two points is now gonna be our attack time. Point two to three will be our release time. And how much we turn point two down is, well, the amount of gain reduction. I have mouse modifiers set to move envelope points on one axis only and check the video above for how to set that up. But I can hold command shift and left drag to move any of these points left to right without affecting their value. So let's hear this. I want it a bit more transparent here, so I'll move point two for a slower attack and less reduction as well. All right, that's sounding good. We got our transient up front and the tail kind of quickly ducks so that this hopefully will sit better in the mix. So before and after. And on its own, it may seem, you know, less interesting than before. But again, this will hopefully play better with other low end elements in the mix. So again, just because I know people are going to get nitpicky about this type of stuff, we're not technically doing compression but we are achieving the same results that a compressor would, if that makes sense. So with, you know, manual compression, we don't really have a threshold or a knee since, you know, this is no longer an automated task, but we can arrive at exactly the same kind of gain reduction curves as if we set a ratio, maybe a knee and a threshold. A huge difference here is, you know, if I turn my item down, this curve will obviously not change at all. So it's not dependent on the incoming signal anymore. It's just an absolute reduction of gain no matter what the incoming signal does. Still, this is now sounding kind of how I like it. So one kick hit down, you know, a million more to go. But don't worry, it gets really easy from here. I'll move my mouse just below the lane and hold option. You will see my cursor changes into this pencil. And I'll turn snap back on for a second. And I'm going to drag to draw an automation item around this curve. So now we got an automation item and we have covered this before in detail. So check the video above. 
but essentially an automation item can be treated just like any other item. I can drag on its size to loop it. I can hold option to shrink it or expand it. And there's tons more things you can do as well. So check that video if you don't know. So looping in this case won't help as my kicks don't hit at a regular interval. And if they did, probably compression would work on them anyway. But I can right click on the automation item and choose create pooled duplicate, which creates a copy of the item here. Then I'll turn snapping back off and move this to the next kick. Now, because these items are pooled, if I adjust one, the rest of the pooled duplicates get adjusted too. So even after laying all my curves down on all my hits, I can go and make more adjustments that will apply to all of them. Also, notice how the waveform is changing as the automation does. So we can kind of see on the waveform exactly what the compression is doing, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway. Let's keep going and instead of right clicking to make a pulled duplicate, you can also use a mouse modifier. So hold down command and option, aka control and alt, and drag on this automation item to create a pulled duplicate. And again, I'll move this to the next hit. Now here we get to two hits that are pretty close by and we can see that the curve hasn't arrived back at unit again by the second kick, but we can trim this item a bit and then I'll hold option to shrink it as well. So even though we shrunk it, since it's pooled, it's gonna still react to changes made elsewhere to other pooled copies. It just does it faster and already we have essentially adjusted the attack and release time of our compression kind of contextually. And hopefully you're starting to see how powerful this could be. So I'll keep going, go back and maybe grab the longer one again and put it on the second hit. Now with the automation item we shrunk, it now fits in that short time window and still resets back to zero before the next hit which is the whole point of doing this. But of course, since the attack time changed, it's kind of less transparent now. It's really just letting the transient through and then instantly just shuts the door, you know? It's kind of like a bouncer at a club. It's like, okay, you get in, oh, not you. Does that, that makes sense. I like that analogy, I think, whatever. But anyway, what I can do is right click on it and choose remove from pool. And now this automation item is independent. So now we can see that as I adjust this one, the other ones don't change. So now I can compensate for that attack time manually for those shorter hits. But the other ones kind of remain linked. I'll keep going in this next part. The two hits are so close together that I won't even bother compressing the first one. Yet another benefit of all this manual labor. From here, it's, you know, really rinse and repeat. But just as a side, if we go to our mouse modifiers, automation item and left drag, we can see that command and option is set to copy and pull automation item by default, but I've added something to the double click menu as well. So command and option is normally unassigned here, but I'll click on it, go to the action list and search for unpool, highlight this action called remove automation item from pool, and I'll highlight it and hit select. Then I can just hit apply and close this. So now I can hold command and option and drag to create a pulled copy. And if I then use the same mouse modifier and double click, I can remove an automation item from the pool, making it independent. And you can confirm this and kind of check what is pulled and what isn't by looking at the number in front of the automation item. So we can see all our pooled copies are marked with the number three, but this one is a five. Alternatively, you can select any item, choose delete automation item, preserve points, to just, you know, end up with old fashioned automation. And that'll give me more space to place the next one. Two automation items can overlap, but just visually I kind of don't dig it. So I won't finish this because I already actually did this twice and OBS crashed on me. Uh, but I think you get the gist. Super powerful stuff, lots of control. I can select all my automation items and even move them back a bit for a bit of pre-comp action or even nudge them forward which is not exactly achievable with a regular compressor just by adjusting the attack because it reacts as soon as the threshold is exceeded. You can slow down this reaction, but you can't ever bring it to a halt in a, in a regular compressor. I'm sure there's one out there that does it. So this is something kind of new to play with as well. Um, now, since we wrote to the pre-effects envelope, I can now even repurpose my compressor plugin to just kind of tame the peaks, even out the loudness, and also give us some makeup gain. Otherwise you can also boost the amplitude of your automation items. And hey, we can even use this as a side chain, right? So 
I can just toggle the volume envelope for any other track and then right drag to select all the automation items and I can hold command and just drag them down here. From here, you know, adjust the timing and placement if I need to. And now we got ourselves essentially a side chain kind of sorta. Like, okay, it's not at all like side chaining if you wanna be a dick about it. But we're still applying something we generated on one track to adjust the gain on another track. So that sounds like close enough for government work to me. 